All right, so welcome to the Western North Carolina Hemp Growers Meeting. Uh, this meeting is brought to you by Extension personnel in Western North Carolina, and many Extension agents helped us put this together. There have been hemp meetings led by Extension all across the state, and those have mostly focused on Extension specialists talking about their work, and those have all been recorded, and all those recordings are going to be posted. So we wanted to make this one a little bit different, and this is the one where we want to hear from our growers in our part of the state because we now know we've got enough years under our belt to know that growing hemp in Western North Carolina is not the same as growing hemp in the rest of the state. So we'll be hearing from growers and processors and then we'll tell you just a little bit of the research that we've been doing and continue to do. Um, our moderators helping us out here today are Margaret Bloomquist. Margaret, you want to give us a wave? <laughs> <laughs> Margaret is my research associate and, you know, basically runs my program. Um, and then Katie Learn. Katie, give us a wave. And Katie is a research assistant in my program and also a graduate student and helping us with this event today is part of her extension experience. Um, we ask that you stay muted and use the chat box to ask questions or make comments and Katie and Margaret will be monitoring those. Um, a couple housekeeping notes. So stay muted, use the chat box. This is being recorded. Uh, you do have the option to change your name if you just have a number or you've got your kid's name or something showing. You can get in and change your own name or if you don't want your name showing up, you can turn it into something else. Uh, we're in the Western part of the state. You might not have a real strong connection. And if things get choppy on you, oftentimes turning off your video. And if you're new to Zoom, if you run your cursor around the bottom of the screen, you will see a microphone with the mute. You also see a stop video that, you know, you can go ahead and just click that and That'll just, you know, leave just your name or a blank screen showing. Um, Katie, you can't make Gary a co-host. Okay, I will take care of that. Only if I can spell Gary. Okay, we've got him. So you watch, just let me know when you see Chip come in. Um, and if you get bumped off, off again just because of our mountain connections just go ahead and rejoin you might be in the um, waiting room for just a minute or two but just wait and we will let you in so we did have one speaker that had to back out at the last minute because of the incoming storm um, but we still have three growers speaking, and I don't think anybody's going to object to us stopping 15 minutes early this evening. So let's see. Just checking our chat as we're getting started here. So Katie, did you just hit the mute button for everybody? That might have been me, Janine, carry on. <laughs> I just had to pause my video because my internet was getting a bit full, so. Okay. <laughs> all right. Just we have to keep in mind that all of us at co-hosts, I guess, have the ability to do that to each other. So we've all just got to keep an eye on each other. Hey, Janine, I think you got muted. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm going to have to really watch that button down there. Maybe somebody's doing that to me on purpose. Mute Janine. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and get started with our first speaker, and that's Joe Evans with Hemp Life. Um, and Bill, did you want to go ahead and introduce him and bring him online? 
Uh, we got a lot of feedback. Uh, Geneva, uh, <laughs> okay, you've got, somebody's got to turn one of their microphones off. If you got two laptops going, one has to get shut off. And you're muted. Okay, go ahead. All right. We're muted. Okay, go ahead. You want to unmute it? No, talk. Okay. Yep, you're fine. Okay. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to be co-hosting with you folks tonight. And uh, I'm a hemp farmer from Western uh, North Carolina over here in uh, Newland. And uh, glad to be here with Jerry and Bill and uh, all of you. Because uh, sharing experiences is much needed. Uh, matter of fact, I wish we had more of these meetings before I got started. <laughs> uh, we do business under Hemp Life Incorporated. And you still can't get a checking account with the name Hemp in it at uh, Wells Fargo. So uh, we do business sometimes under Dominion Management Company as well, you know, because of that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share basically uh, some experience over the three years that uh, we've been raising hemp for, in this new one here. I'm going to share a little bit of the experience with fertilization and insects and disease. And then we also process uh, as well. So I'll share some of the experiences with uh, processing. We take it from, I like to say seed to shelf and some people call that vertical integration. Uh, and I think that's, that's real good for people that wanna get into the hemp business and, and start raising hemp. If you, don't, if you aren't ver vertically integrated and you don't have some market to move some of the product, uh, you're in deep weeds these days is a, a, I don't mind saying, but uh, got involved with raising hemp uh, three years ago. Uh, a friend of mine uh, who uh, I've known for years up here in the spruce pine area was into alternative medicine and, and you know, alternative treatments. And he became familiar with CBD and introduced my wife and I to CBD. And because of, you know, the benefits of what I saw in CBD, uh, he approached me about trying to grow some hemp. And that's really the way I got started, uh, is because of, you know, that interest and connection with him. We started in uh, 2018, which I believe was the second year that, uh, that North Carolina came out with the industrial hemp program. And I joint ventured, I did a joint venture with uh, two farmers, Claude Pike and uh, Joy Gregg in this area. And the first year we planted 15 acres uh, of hemp. We planted uh, Super Haze and Lifter. And let me tell you, that was a good decision because both of those strains of hemp uh, have done pretty good and did well for us that year. They grew seven, eight feet tall seven or eight feet wide. We planted uh, on five and five, five feet between the rows and five feet between the plants. And we had about 20,000 uh, pounds of hemp. And we did really good that first year, uh, and which, is, which is a good deal because if, if any of you have had any ventures before in, in starting out and, and doing new things, a lot of times you don't make money the first year. You know, <laughs> it takes you several years to you get to the break even point. But uh, it was a good experience, and we we planted uh, the second year in 2019. We planted cherry wine, lifter, and spectrum, and I did uh, a couple of couple of things the second year. I, I cut back on the amount of hemp that I was trying to uh, raise because I found out the first year 15 acres of hemp was a lot of work. And I'll point this out. I'll say this as well. There are two main labor intensive times in uh, raising hemp and growing hemp. Planting, because you got to get the cultivars, you got to get the seeds, you got to get the land prep. You got, uh, you well know, there's a lot of work involved in that. And you got the labor of planting it. 
Uh, and then the second time, you're going to have labor intensive uh, efforts is in harvesting, obviously, because uh, once the hemp matures and and once you harvest it and bucket and dry it and go through all that process, that's labor intensive. So you got to have make sure you got plenty of uh, personnel, especially for those two uh, times in raising hemp. In 2019, we we planted cherry wine lifter and spectrum, as I said, only planted five acres. Uh, and we only harvested really around 3,000 pounds that year. Didn't do as good uh, as the first year. And last year in 2020, we planted uh, around three acres. And I planted Bayox, and some people call it Box, B A O X. And I planted uh, Lifter. I planted the Bayox, uh, experimenting a good bit with it because it's a lower profile plant and it only goes about three to four feet high, three, three to four feet tall. At least that's what the, the advertising said on it. Uh, and I planted those three and three. Um, uh, I planted part of my crop three and three and part of my crop six and six because I planted some lifter as well with the Bay Ox. I found that the production on the Bay Ox uh, did pretty good on, uh, you know, a smaller concentration of three and three uh, setup. Uh, plants got close together, but we didn't have a whole lot of moisture problems or rain or mildew or mold and things like that that, that uh, can give you problems if your plants are planting too close together. So it did pretty good and it, we made about 4,000 pounds on uh, three acres. So obviously what we, uh, what we also did uh, is harvest some smokable flour in the process of, uh, of, of growing and, and maturing your hemp, which makes a lot of sense because if, if you're in the business for, for uh, smokable flour, you can go in there and you can get the top cut, you can get the big colas, you can get the, the nice uh, cuts out of there and uh, work it up as smokable flour. Uh, as far as uh, fertilization, insects, disease, uh, I would say make sure you uh, get in touch with your extension agent and get some of them bags and get your soil tested because that's that's just an obvious uh, step you need to do to find out what kind of nutrients and uh, things your soil is going to need, which is what we did, what we do. And uh, you test it and make sure you get plenty of nitrogen to it because that's what it takes to uh, hemp loves nitrogen. Get plenty of nitrogen in the growth uh, season and uh, hemp will do well. Now, Fertilization, your soil test will tell you what kind of fertilization you need. As far as as insects, we we don't have we don't have hemp it to me in my experience is it's a very hardy plant. It uh, it withstands weather, it withstands wind, it withstands things, it was it's it's hardy. It uh, you don't have a whole lot of problem, at least we don't in this area with uh, a lot of the insects and disease. Now, you, you, we did have uh, what they call brown mites. You know, we had, we had some brown mites uh, the second year we grew. And we treat the stuff with uh, organic uh, treatments. Uh, we try to, to raise our hemp as, as organically as possible, obviously, because uh, when people are putting things uh, in their body, you want to make sure they're, they're not getting uh, heavy metals and, and you know a whole lot of bad stuff. So we use organic uh, treatments. We had some brown mites. Uh, we also uh, have an issue with um, root uh, or blossom rot. And what we found out is the uh, the blossom rot is caused by the moths that come in at a certain time of the year and they lay these larva lays eggs in uh, the plants and the eggs hatch and they become larva and uh, you get these worms that start uh, defecating and, and messing up your plants and it'll cause those blooms and those colas to really uh, get brown and uh, get nasty. So 
you, you need to be on top of that. That's the main, one of the main issues uh, and experiences that we've had in Western North Carolina is the blossom rot. And you can treat that organically as well. Same stuff you use uh, for corn worms. Uh, you, can, you can treat and uh, spray for blossom rot. And it'll, it'll cut that back and it'll, uh, it'll help a lot with that. So bloom rot, blossom rot, uh, fertilization, talked about that. Um, we, I started having people requesting CBD products. They found out I was growing hemp. And that's the way I got really into uh, processing or making my own hemp products, uh, as well as smokable flour. I had people come around doing some work in the field and they'd say, hey, Joe, I'm trying to quit smoking. Would you mind if I get a few buds to take home with me? And I had no idea that uh, people could use hemp to help, you know, with a smoking habit. Had no idea that as many people uh, smoked hemp to get CBD and to relax. And, and so that's how I got into the smokable flower and smokable flower has been one of the most profitable aspects of the business for us. And also uh, when people started requesting the CBD products, I uh, started figuring out how to extract and became a processor and uh, started doing my own extraction, got a still and uh, figured how that process worked. And, and really, I liked it because I could control. I knew what my product had in it. I, I planted it in the field. I put the fertilizer to it. I treated it for, you know, for the insects and the mold and the mildew, things like that. So I knew, and I had soil tests. So I knew uh, you know, my, my land didn't have heavy metals and money. put a lot of bad stuff into the product. And then I could process it and get it tested, you know, what my CBD contents uh, were. And I could put a product out that uh, I felt confident about people putting in their body as well as the amount of CBD they were getting in a product. So uh, I had a lot of fun with that and I really enjoy that. And, and I found that, uh, that really CBD and hemp is, I call it a miracle plant. And, and I, I, tell, I can't tell you enough uh, how pleased I am to be involved with it because so many people are blessed and uh, are touched, you know, in a, in a good way by using him. And so that's basically my experiences. And uh, I look forward to hearing what some of the other folks have got to say about it. And I'll be glad to answer any questions or help anybody in any way that I, that I can. Well, you did a really great job of staying on time. Um, so we can take a couple of these questions uh, right now. Katie, did you want to pick out some of those that are in the chat box right now to, to ask? Uh, yes, yeah, so Rosemary asks, uh, what did you use to treat for mold and mildew? That's a good question. Uh, the, the, uh, I can't remember the name of the organic uh, stuff I got from Nutrien, uh, the same stuff we use to build to treat the corn worms. You remember? I don't recall even what product you were using. I don't. I don't recall either. I can't remember the name of it. But I'll be glad to uh, look it up and uh, get that back to Janine. And, uh, put it okay. Out. And if there's a number of things like that, I can do an email real easy through Eventbrite and get some of that information out to everyone. So yeah, if, Joe, if you get that back to us. Katie, you got another one? Um, I do. Uh, Charles would like to know any issues with worms? Worms? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, uh, the, the mold and mildew are basically caused by the worms which are the larvae that the moths, you know, lay into the buds. Uh, now, of course, that can be complicated further if you have a real wet season and you get a lot of rain uh, and, and the plants are close together and not getting a lot of aeration or wind uh, in between plants. The main cause of mold and mildew that we found in, in, in my neck of the woods up here are the worms, the larvae. And if you get 
the worms and the larva working in it and you also get wet weather, you're gonna, you're gonna really have an issue. The best thing to do uh, is treat and spray for you know, the moths that are laying those eggs in the plants uh, early in the game and that'll help get control of that. Uh, there are a couple questions here, or a couple people making comments that they can't find processors to do smaller batches. Uh, do you process for other other growers also, Joe? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I quit processing my own because the uh, last year I used a broker, which is a new broker, to try to help sell some of my crop. And uh, the bottom, there's a lot of you, all of you probably know, the bottom fell out of the market and you can't get a good price, uh, you know, biomass. So he couldn't sell the biomass and I ended up, he ended up having, he went on, on halves with a, uh, a lab that processed it, he told it, and uh, they kept half of it, he kept half of it, he was going to sell it, you know, make a profit and pay me. He couldn't sell it, so I ended up having to get my hemp biomass, I mean, my, my crude back from him. So I got 30 kilos of crude, which is <laughs> supplying what I need to make products for, you know, quite a while now. So I, I, I'm not really process, having to process my own hemp uh, anymore, you know, to get the crude. Because, uh, I got plenty on hand. That's my situation now. Okay. Well, we do have a small processor that will be speaking a little later on, and so maybe that will answer some of those questions. And just one other real quick one, Katie, that I saw early on were people talking about the banking. So let's see. Um, some fo folks are saying Bank of America will accommodate you, although I heard someone have their account shut down by Bank of America just within the past week. Westtown Bank is being mentioned, and that is one that I probably hear the most people say they're using. Um, please, if I could, Janine. Yes, please. Uh, and I meant to, I meant to mention that because that's a real problem with, uh, you know, the retail side of it. Um, we got a website, obviously, and we sell uh, on the web. And I have some smaller dealers throughout the Southeast that uh, market our products. But I was using PayPal, and then I went to, uh, oh, what's that other one? Square. Square. Both of those companies closed my accounts and froze my accounts because they started classifying hemp CBD products as hazardous products some reason um, and it's caused a real stink in the industry as far as I'm concerned uh, I've had and, and matter of fact PayPal their policy is you can't get your money for six months and uh, and then of course if you close your account you, you know you got other issues you got people trying to buy your products on the web can't buy your product it's, it's a real problem so I've had to make some creative choices about uh, how to sell them a lot of my products. And I've been in the process of getting another uh, merchant account set up. I've got a guy that's doing a pretty good job of uh, getting another merchant account set up. Now, I don't know exactly who that's going to be with yet. I haven't got the details. It should be finalized in the next few days. I'll let you know, Janine, and maybe you might want to put that out as well. Because that's a real problem. Okay, yeah, that's something I might want to ask uh, our legal <laughs> extension specialist to help us cover because she's doing a lot of that kind of work. All right, well, thank you very much, Joe. We're ready to move on to our next speaker.